Well, last night, I had the opportunity to do something pretty dang cool. Uh, I got to sleep in an old World War II bunk in a reconstructed World War II barracks at Camp Tokoa at Kurahi, where the men from the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment and three other Parachute Infantry Regiments trained in preparation to fight in World War II. So this was my bedroom last night. I am back in Tokoa where I visited last fall and I'm so excited to share everything that's going on here and, and what we're going to be doing over the next few days. But as for right now, it's dark, so I can't really show anything. So uh, you, you can't come to Tokoa where men like uh, Richard Winters and George Luz and Bill Garnier and Carwood Lipton trained and, and not do a little bit of training yourself. So I'm going to go out and uh, put myself through some sort of rigorous uh, physical exercise. And then whenever it gets daylight, we're gonna circle back around here and show some pretty cool things that are going on at Tacoa. Well, got our workout in, uh, got a quick shower, and uh, now that we've got some daylight, can explain what it is that we are doing here. Uh, so just for the sake of context, last year uh, I came here with my son to Tacoa. We came to uh, Camp Tacoa at Curahi, went to the Curahi Military Museum, and if you watched those videos, you saw one in particular where we went to the, the very top of Curahi and found just an insane amount of graffiti and vandalism. So I made an offhand comment about, you know, getting a group of people together and coming back and cleaning up. Well, turns out that video sparked a considerable amount of outrage uh, across the world, and uh, that outrage led to action. Now, we didn't go and, and burn anything down, uh, but instead, a whole bunch of people, literally from around the world, came together, we raised a bunch of money, and now we are back here at the base of Curahi and we are going to go back up that mountain and clean it up and get it to looking uh, closer to the way that uh, men like Dick Winters and Bill Garnier and uh, Popeye Wynn and some of those other guys who trained here uh, would have seen it. Now, before we do that, we're gonna have a bunch of people coming in later, but uh, there have been a lot of changes here at Camp Tacoa that I wanna show. So do you remember the C-47 that I showed in the last video that was all in pieces and strewn about? Well, look at it now. Now it doesn't have its wings attached yet, but uh, they've got it up on its wheels and have a really nice paint job. So if you look, there's the entrance to Camp Tacoa at Curahee. So as people come in, this is going to be one of the first things they see. Crazy to think of all of the work that the volunteers have done here just uh, in the time that I left. They have been quite busy. Oop. And I don't think I'm supposed to be here. Now, you may remember in those earlier videos here at Camp Tacoa where I showed the barracks. Uh, just in short, um, after the war, these barracks were torn down uh, by locals. You could, I think for $25 per building, you could have the wood. The wood was stored in a barn here locally, and uh, they are using that wood to rebuild these barracks. Well, here's the one that I looked at in the earlier video. But look at the work that they've done since I left. So there's one, two foundations, and another barracks that has been completely built. So they're going to have four total to represent the four 
parachute infantry regiments that trained here. A lot of people associate Camp Tacoa with uh, Easy Company because of Band of Brothers, but there were a lot of men who, who trained here and, uh, and a lot of men who, who didn't come back. But you can come here and stay in these barracks. All right, now I, I really want to go inside and show some of the updates. All right, so we've already got a, a little bit of a glimpse in here already, but look at how nice this is. Uh, so there's where I stayed last night. Uh, but some cool additions that they have is uh, these old original uh, World War II bunks. Um, and then if you go and look here, all of these window frames are original to uh, the the barracks here at Tacoa, and uh, they have this available for groups to rent out, and and you can stay here, right in the same place where the uh, men who trained here stayed. Uh, pretty cool experience, and of course, like I said, each one represents the different parachute infantry regiments. Each barracks represents the different parachute infantry regiments that trained here, this particular one being for the 506th. And since we are going to need plenty of clean energy this weekend with our cleaning efforts, uh, brought a few cases of the old Jocko Discipline Go. This one, no offense to the others, but the old Sour Apple has to be my favorite. George. I promise you that I did not carve my name into one of your old World War II army bunks. That was somebody else. So uh, please do not ban me from ever staying in the barracks again. All right. Well, those are just a few of the updates that have occurred here at Camp Tacoa since my last visit. And all of this has been done with volunteer labor and with money that has been donated to Camp Tacoa. Uh, pretty amazing. I didn't even mention the giant pavilion that they've built back here, uh, which is equally amazing. So this would be a great place to come not only to visit for the history, uh, but if you want to have like leadership retreats or uh, reunions or get-togethers or anything like that It's an absolute great space and the people that do the work here are really uh, My own personal heroes. All right. So anyway, we have some more volunteers who are coming in here in a little bit uh, We're going to tour the facilities and some other areas here around Tacoa and then we are going to be getting to work up on Curahee Mountain All right, well, uh, pretty exciting. We have most of our crew that has rolled in, and uh, I, I opted not to get the camera out for whenever people were showing up because it seems kind of weird to meet somebody for the first time and just shove a camera in their face. But anyway, I uh, got people from all over the U.S. Really, really exciting. Uh, they are inside the Camp Tacoa Museum right now, uh, checking out a little bit of the history of this place. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in there now. Okay, so we're kind of continuing our tour through uh, Tacoa here, and uh, we're just rolling in to really one of my favorite museums, the Curahee Military Museum. So I'm anxious to uh, get in here and kind of uh, share this experience with everybody since I've been here, but I haven't been here with, with other people. So anyway, getting ready to go in and uh, see what I missed the first time. Now, here's something that I missed my first time through. This is an elevation marker that used to be on top of Curahee. And uh, this is what the, the men would go up to the top of the mountain and touch whenever they were running the three miles up and three miles down. But yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so there's so much that I missed on 
my first trip here. If you look on this list, uh, in this column, let's see if I can point it out with my finger, like right in there, uh, there's the name Nyland. Well, that is one of the Nyland brothers who the movie Saving Private Ryan was based off of. And in this yard long photo, let me adjust my lighting. Their seventh from the right in that front standing row is Fritz Nyland. So cool that they have this. All right, well, here is yet another item that I missed my first time through. Uh, I've talked about Meehan on a couple of different videos. He was uh, one of the men who was killed in a plane crash uh, on D-Day, one of the, the first men killed. Uh, well, these are items that were recovered from the crash site, including uh, wristwatch, also a clicker. Wow. All right, what do you think? It's, honestly, it's hard to put it into words. Um, for me personally, I think the most difficult thing to take in is that this building came all the way from England where these men were staying themselves in the middle of this great war. And the fact that we can stand here in the United States, see where they carved their names on the wall, where they hit their letters, it, it honestly cannot really be put into words for me personally. Yeah, definitely has a cool vibe to it when oh, you're yeah. in here, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it, it brings you there a little bit. Here's a division that just simply does not get the attention that it deserves, and that's the 11th Airborne, which also trained at Tacoa. If you ever get a chance, look up the raid at Los Banos. Uh, these guys did some amazing, amazing things over in the Pacific Theater. And uh, also, fun fact, Rod Sterling, the guy who created the Twilight Zone or was the host of the Twilight Zone, was in the 11th Airborne. All right, so we've had a, a pretty full day today. Uh, went to a couple different museums. Tomorrow, we're going to be heading up to the top of Curry to clean it up. But uh, this evening, we're doing things proper here at Tacoa and watching the Curry episode together from Band of Brothers. So uh, anyway, pretty uh, pretty cool experience, yes. <laughs> All right, uh, but tomorrow, tomorrow the work begins. Well, it is uh, Saturday morning before Memorial Day, and uh, we're here on top of Curahi, uh getting ready to clean stuff up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show some of the uh, vandalism and and graffiti because I want people to see what it looked like before. And whenever you have people getting together uh, for a common cause to do some good, what it, it looks like after. And we have some crazy people who, uh, even though we have a full day of work ahead of them, are uh, making the decision to hike up Curahee. Like this guy right here. We got uh, Chris from uh, Vlogging Through History. So three miles up, three miles down. <laughs> now I can say I did the up anyway. <laughs> You, awesome. You sound like you could use a glass of water. I've got some in my backpack. I'm ready for it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, piece of cake. <laughs> so, how, how was the hike? It was wonderful. <laughs> it was cooler this morning and a lot of uphill. Yes. <laughs> Very, yes. Especially at the end. There's so. a lot of uphill on the way down, too. I know, I know. <laughs> but I loved every minute of it. It was very cool. Now I need some water. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at this mess if you saw the first video that i put out well then this looks all too familiar uh, and this is just one small part that we're going to be attacking today i i do want to say something to some heroes of mine at uh, punisher blasting punisher mobile blasting uh, this is mark right here who is a local owner of uh, Sandblasting Company. And uh, Mark, I like what you had to say. We're, we're about ready. What would you say, what is it that you said? Wreak havoc on ignorance. Yeah, that's it. 
<laughs> oh man. But uh, yeah, Mark's a good guy and uh, is doing this free of charge. You're a good man, Mark. <laughs> now, this is an area of the mountain that I did not come to before. So, might want to come up here to uh, reflect on the beauty of God's creation and the sacrifice of the men who fought in World War II. But man, instead, you're distracted by all of the defacement to these stones here. This, this is exceptionally bad. But we're gonna clean it up though, right? Right, let's, let's do it. <laughs> we have trash, obviously, is something that you don't let go out of your way. Patrick, doing a Good job cleaning up the rocks there. Yeah, well, you know, I'm trying to do a you trick here. I'm trying to like throw it and catch. Oh. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> Kelly, you look like a Ghostbuster. <laughs> uh, these two right here came from Nevada. <laughs> came all the way to Tacoa from Nevada. So you you all get the uh, the distance prize. <laughs> Red eye finally paid off. <laughs> Okay, hang on a second. And I'm craving oysters right now. Oh, what's, dude, whenever they call that elephant snot. They meant it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ash, what do you think of all this up here? What can I say? Chance of a lifetime. All right, so uh, up here on top of Curahi and Dad Gum, look at the view. And uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't give credit to to the guy who is responsible for all of this, and that is Sam. He is the founder of the uh, Curahi Cleanup Project. So he, he's the one who's doing all of the, the heavy lifting and the hard work. So uh, it's pretty cool to see all of these different groups coming together to uh, make this happen. Yeah. So when I was a kid, I mean, there really wasn't much yeah and there was like a few things on the outside but this rock was mostly pretty bare and now it's just it's gotten worse the graffiti is not cool it's kind of it's not it's annoying and it looks like crap <laughs> <laughs> emily we slinging some snot yeah <laughs> Not sling. That's what I. Okay, so this is kind of a funny story. This is Emily. You're from West Virginia. Yeah. That's right. Uh -huh. Okay. So, how? What grade are you in? I'm a sophomore in college. Sophomore in college. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, basically, she watches the channel and uh, signed up, and then told her parents that they were going too. So, <laughs> it's been it's been pretty cool. Y'all drive down. We are kind of wrapping up a long and difficult day of work with really some of the, the best people that I have ever been around. And uh, we, we didn't get all of the graffiti because this was a, a huge job, but we got a lot of it. And uh, you know what it looked like before. I cannot wait for you to see what it looks like after. <laughs> My gosh, 
take a look at this and tell me that this doesn't look so much better than all of that nasty spray paint caked up on these rocks. So if you remember from that earlier video that I did, I don't even know where it was now. It was right here in this area where somebody had painted that awful uh, I love Hitler statement in uh, spray paint. So it's, it's very cool to see this area in the process. We're not done yet, uh, but in the process of being restored to its natural state and uh, to the state that the Tacoa men would have known it whenever they were training here on the mountain. I'll tell you what, whenever you step back and look at what happened here today, it really is quite amazing. Uh, we had people traveling from all over the U.S. We had people donate from all over the world, uh, all with different interests and, and backgrounds. We had uh, people that were interested in history. We had rock climbers. Uh, we had people from the online gaming community. We had local businessmen uh, like Mark and Jeremy from Punisher Mobile Blasting. Uh, we had cooperation from the, the U.S. Forest Service. We had all of these different groups that all came together for a common cause because they saw a wrong that needed to be righted and they were willing to take their words and put them into action and start pushing back on something that, that really, really needed corrected. Now, we, we do need to be real about something. Um, in the short term, this, this isn't going to, to last. The, the people who, who vandalized this area will be back and they will do it again until this area achieves a protected status. But that doesn't mean that we give up. If there's one thing that we can learn from history, it's that there are just some people who define themselves by what they can desecrate and what they can destroy. The, the men who ran up this mountain in training to go to World War II knew that all too well. But again, that doesn't mean that we give up. There, there are always going to be people who are going to try and tear things down and try and turn the world in into an ugly place. And it's in those times whenever good people have to band together, and they have to make a firm stand and say, no, you, you will not do this. Uh, you, you will not destroy our history. Uh, you, you will not desecrate and take the things that God has made beautiful and turn them into something ugly. Uh, you're not going to take our society and, and grind it into the dirt. There are a lot of good people who came out here today from literally all over the United States and uh, committed themselves and their time and their money and their resources to, to doing a, a good work. And uh, there's still a lot more to do here at Curahee. And, uh, and I'm sure that we will be back. Uh, but until then, go out and do something good. <laughs>